Hello, Professor Pavlo. This is Officer Wu of the Carnegie Mellon University Police Department. Um, would you be able to give me a call back, please? I need to speak to you. Uh, number here is 412. I'll be here tonight until 11, and I'll be back in tomorrow at 3. Thank you very much. Official members bounce, bust off the chrome. Realize it's real hell where we call home. Official members bounce, bust off the chrome. Realize it's real hell where we call home. From the heart inside one. I vision fat licks and mat clips The chrome will make the average imitator do backflips You lack a pistol So put a vest around the issue Slugs will never miss you Alright, so since the mic got f***ed last time uh, Let's try this again So this lecture is supposed to be about the course logistics And what the overview of what this semester is going to look like for everyone And that way we can cover this material now And not have to worry about uh, spending time on it the first day of class And we can focus right away on the good stuff Relational model, relational algebra so before we begin, we want to thank all the companies that have been involved in helping with course development and research at the Carnegie Mellon Database Group uh, this semester. Um, so all these companies will be coming on campus in a few weeks, and you have a chance to talk with them for recruiting events, either for internships or full-time positions. Um, and they're also going to be coming throughout the semester and giving sort of these 10-minute flash talks to discuss you know, the various things that they've going on at the companies building their system or database products. Um, so we really appreciate their, their support. Uh, and we look forward to you know, seeing them on site on here on campus pretty soon. So today I want to first discuss the wait list, because um, that's probably for a lot of people the most important thing. And then I want to talk about what's expected for you as a student taking the class. And then we'll finish off talking about like here's, you know, here's a logistical thing with things we, we need to worry about as we go through along, go along the uh, semester. So for the wait list, unfortunately, uh, I no longer have control over the wait list because the class got so popular. And now there's a separate administrators for both the undergraduate 445 and the graduate 645 level or sections of the course. Um, so if you email me, I, I, there's, unfortunately, there's, like, there's nothing I can do. I have since learned at the university that there is backroom channel discussions between the various programs of letting students into one course in, in one you know, school that helps another student get into another school. So uh, all of this is beyond my control. So I apologize uh, if we can't take everyone that we want. The good news is that since we now hired a new database professor, um, Jignesh Patel, in the last year, we can now offer 445, 645 every semester. So if, you, if you're not able to take it this semester, uh, you, can, you can then take it again in, in the spring. So at this point, like, if you're not enrolled in the course, it's probably unlikely that you're going to be able to enroll in the course. So you probably should start thinking out other options. OK, so I will say this again on the first day of class. but. Uh, the only rules I have during lecture is that uh, I want you to interrupt me as much as possible with questions as we're going along. Um, I get excited when I talk about databases, and I can start talking uh, fast. So if you're confused by something or something doesn't make sense on the slides, by all means, stop me, raise your hand, and say, you know, what, what's actually going on. Um, and so what I won't do is answer any questions about the lecture immediately after the class is over. In you know, previous years, I'd had a bunch of students line up and say, you know, hey, on slide whatever, you, you said this. and slide 34, you said that. And I kept repeating myself over and over again. Um, and so it's better to get things captured on, for the video and the audio. We can go back and look at previous years and try to improve things. So there'll be no questions. I won't answer any questions about lecture material immediately after class. During class, though, I ask that you don't ask questions about things that uh, don't concern the rest of the class. Things like, can I go to the bathroom? Uh, you're all adults. Please just go without asking. And then don't ask anything about blockchain. I think blockchains are a uh, terrible idea for databases, uh, and we're not going to be discussing it uh, throughout the entire semester. So no, no questions about that. So this course is about the design and implementation of database management systems. So it's about the internals of the system, so the, the algorithms, the data structures, and the methods, the components that we build uh, in, in a system to process and manage a, a database. So it is not a class about how to use a database or administer a database. Um, the first homework assignment, you'll, you'll write some SQL. But then after that, you're actually building your own database system to support uh, SQL and uh, relational databases. So if this is not what you're looking for, uh, then there are courses in the Heinz College in Information Systems um, on how to use and administer databases. I think one of them is based on, on Oracle. Um, so that's what, you, that's what you really want. Then you should go take that course and not this course. Uh, I think there's a software engineering course as well in, uh, in SCS about how to you know, build an application using a database. I think it's web programming. 
Um, and again, that's more applied than what we're, what we're discussing here. This course really is about how to build the, the internals of a database system. So all of the material for the, the, the expectations for you as a student is available on the course website. The, so the schedule has been updated, uh, the syllabus is there, the, the calendar with all the assignments for the homeworks and projects and when they're due is now online as well. All of the discussions should occur through Piazza. Um, and if you're a student, you can log in uh, through that. Everyone should have been invited. Um, and if not, we can send out a uh, invite code for everyone to, to use as well. So all the discussions for any of the projects and logistics and things like that should be done through, through Piazza. All the homeworks and projects will be submitted and auto-graded through, through Gradescope. And I'll talk about how to do that if you're a non-CMU student in, in a second. And then the final grades will be posted through, through Canvas. So it'll be this final spreadsheet to see the breakdown across all the, uh, the grades for all the projects and everything. And then from Canvas, it goes, goes on to S3 for the final grade. Um, the regrade requests will also be done through Gradescope, um, and the announcements for you know, when assignments are due and everything will be done through Gradescope as well. If you're not a CMU student and want to follow along with the course, uh, we also make available a non-CMU Gradescope uh, site. You have to uh, sign up for an account and then use this uh, login code. You have to specify that your university is Carnegie Mellon University, uh, otherwise it won't work. And so in exchange for making everything available that we make for CMU students outside of, of CMU, we just ask that you don't post any of your solutions on GitHub, uh, don't email the instructors of TA for help. There's an unofficial Discord channel uh, that someone outside of CMU maintains, but none of the TAs or none of my students w w uh, should go there for help. Everything should, you know, if you're a CMU student, every do everything through Piazza. But you want to sort of follow along with other people, and I think they, every semester they go along with the course, the, the others. There's people you, you can meet up with there uh, and, and work on projects and things, so forth. The projects will be made available, or the, grades, the project will be made up for grading on Gradescope uh, to non CMU students after the deadline for the CMU students. Um, if you're a CMU student, we strongly encourage you not to go try and find some rando off the internet, off GitHub, uh, and copy their work because what we'll do is we'll end up, it's not, you know, if you find all the GitHub repos we have that are implementing these projects from non CMU students, and we throw everything in the plagiarism checker on Gradescope and to uh, track down and find, find people copying code they shouldn't be copying. Uh, so don't be stupid. Uh, the offhand, I would say the, usually the, the non-CMU code is not as good as the CMU code because we can see the leaderboards. So we're just strongly encouraged not to copy from, from, from other people, you know, whether they're from CMU or not. There is a textbook for this course. I don't think you can actually get a physical copy anymore from the bookstore. I think you can only get uh, uh, PDF form. Um, so this is database system concepts from Hank, Shundershin, and Avi. Uh, the, for every lecture, there'll be assigned readings for that as well. Um, but for some of the topics, we won't, they're actually not in the textbook. Um, so we have supplemental readings through, through the notes if you want to follow along for those things as well. It's, in my opinion, it's probably the best database systems textbook that's there now. It's the only one that's actually sort of actively being maintained um, so this is the one I recommend. All right, so if you're a student, the breakdown for the, for the grades is listed here, as uh, shown here. So homework is gonna be 15%, and then projects will be 45% of your final grade. Um, and the reason why it's so much is because this, this course counts as a software systems elective for, uh, for grad students and for undergraduates. Um, and so it has to be very, very heavily project-based. And we'll talk about the projects in a second. And then it'll be a midterm and a final exam um, that are each count for 20% of the final grade. And every year, every, you know, students always ask, is the class curved? Yes, by how much? I don't know, it depends on what the grades look like from year to year. The complexity of the difficulty of the course is roughly about the same from, from year to year. Uh, the plan is to tweak the midterm exams and, and final exams a little bit more uh, this year than previous years, but I'm expecting the curve will end up being, uh, will being about the same. And then we'll announce also too, there's a chance for extra points through the projects by ranking higher on, on the leaderboards. But again, we'll cover that throughout the, the semester. So for this year, there's gonna be six homework assignments uh, that we do throughout the, the semester. So the first one is gonna be writing SQL queries for DuckDB and SQLite. And then after that, all the homeworks will be pencil on paper answering, answering problems. Um, and everything is spent through Gradescope uh, and it will be auto-graded. And then the solutions will be made available after the deadline. 
And like the projects, all the homework should be done individually and you shouldn't copy from other people. For all the projects, this is going to be, a, as I said, a, a systems programming heavy course. All the projects are going to be written in an educational database system we've been building here at CMU for a while called BusTub. Um, it's a, written in C++. I know people want us to switch to Rust, but it's, at this point, we have too much code that it's kind of difficult to do that. Um, we may consider it in the future. Um, so of course, that means you need to know C++ in order to take this course. And we're not going to teach C++, and there is no course at CMU that strictly teaches C++, because right? it's computer science, not a programming degree. Um, and so there are some materials that we make available. I'll show more in the next slide, but we also have a boot camp uh, repo with additional information on everything you need to know about, about C++. Um, this is why also in Project Zero that we're going to make available, uh, it's re you're required to implement that in the first two weeks just to prove that you can write C++ code. Um, so don't assume that you'll be able to pick up C++ you know, as you go along. Uh, many have tried. It often doesn't work out. Because uh, it's not just writing C++, it's also debugging C++, concurrent programs and multi-threading, uh, which can be a bit tricky, a bit hairy. So uh, again, do whatever you can to prepare yourself accordingly. And that's why we're kind of requiring everyone to finish the first project uh, in the first two weeks. There are, are late days allowed for, for the projects. Everyone's automatically given four late days that can be used for any reason throughout the time of semester. This obviously for medical emergencies and other problems. We also account for late days, but we'll take that on a case-by-case -case basis. And then for each project, except for the Project Zero, there'll be a recitation that we're going to do online at night where you can come in if the project's been released and ask questions, and we'll go over you know, the key ideas of the project and how to get started. And again, and that'll, that'll be for CMU students. So again, as I said, if you don't know C++, at least C++ 17, there'll be some elements of C++ 23 in there. Uh, but if you don't know C++ 17, uh, stop what you're doing and start learning now because uh, you're going to have problems later on. It's hard enough to like, you know, understand the core concepts that we're trying to, trying to focus on in the projects, but then have to also learn C++ as you're going along uh, will just make your life much, much harder. So um, in this page here, uh, there's a bunch of topics and links to sort of self-quizzes about the material you can go look at. Um, and then the link at the bottom is from the Germans about you know, digital C++ programming, system programming. Uh, in the context of databases. So again, e even if you know C++, it's, it's probably worth going through and, and seeing what, what, what you need to brush up on. And again, Project Zero will we'll stress that as well. So the Project Zero, I think, has been released. We'll make some minor changes to it uh, to fix up some of the descriptions of things. Um, and then we'll make it available to, to submit on Gradescope later today, um, on Monday. And uh, so every, everyone has to complete this assignment by Sunday, September 8th. It's not meant to be challenging. It's not meant to be hard. It's implementing a hyperlog log data structure. It's a pretty, pretty simple one. Uh, but again, it's, it's forcing you to come to terms of whether you actually know C++ or not. Um, the, you don't get a grade for Project Zero, but everyone has to complete or pass all the tests perfectly. Um, otherwise, if you don't do it before September 8th, we have to ask you to drop the course uh, just because we don't think you'll be able to, to handle the, the projects going forward. So sort of preventing you from getting too far deep into the course and, and then realizing you're in over your head and you have to drop the course or fail it, and that would be bad. Right? So we've been doing this for several years now, and the attrition rate for the course has gone down significantly because kids, again, you're coming to terms about whether you actually know C++ or not sooner uh, rather than later. So again, everyone has to complete this for assignment, uh, Project Zero. There's no exceptions made. Uh, so just get it done in an hour or two and then submit it on Gradescope. So we'll have office hours for both myself, the instructor, and the TAs. Everything's been posted on the, on the course website. There's also a calendar we make available to see throughout the time, uh, different times of the day, uh, when, when the office hours are available. So we're not going to have any office hours on Sundays when all the projects and homeworks are due. Um, and the regular office hours will be done through Monday and Friday, Monday through Friday. And the idea here is that we don't want people, you know, if projects due on Sunday, waiting to the very, very last minute to start working on it. So by having the office hours only during the weekdays, it sort of forces you to start working on the project earlier rather than later. But the day before the Sunday of when a, uh, one of the four projects is due, we will have a, uh, we'll have sort of a power session on that Saturday afternoon with multiple TAs for multiple hours. Um, just in case there's sort of any last minute things you want help with to clarify. So again, we'll announce those throughout the semester as we get closer to the different project deadlines, but that, that'll be the only time we have Saturday office hours. 
So as I said, there's, uh, there's automatic four late days that you can use for any reason for any of the projects. There's no late days for the homeworks. They're all or nothing. Um, but if you're out of late days, then you, every day that you miss turning in a project, your grade goes down by, by 10%. Um, and again, if there's something comes up, like a medical emergency or, or a, you know, a, a uncontrolled reason why you have to be out of town and miss a deadline, you know, please email me um, and we can discuss you know, various com accommodations. Excuses like I'm leaving town to go do for job interviews or I'm preparing for job interviews, anything related to you know, hiring, uh, that's not a sufficient reason to miss projects. Um, you can try emailing me, but just telling up front, we won't be granting exceptions in these cases here. So this goes without saying, I, but I have to say it every, every year, please do not plagiarize on either the homeworks or the projects. As I said, in previous years, people have tried to find the, the solutions to the projects from people following along outside of CMU on GitHub, and we, we catch them because we, find, we can see those repos too, they're public. Uh, so we put them into the plagiarizer, plagiarizer checker at, on Gradescope, and you'll, you'll get nailed. Um, and then now, because this is on video, I just take this video to, over to Warner Hall, show them the timestamp, and give them, you know, tell them this is the time when I told the student that not to plagiarize, and they still plagiarized. And then now you have you don't have any excuses. So don't copy from your friends. Don't copy from people. Random things on the internet. If there's anything you may be confused about, just email me, uh, and I'm happy to discuss uh, if it's some rare case or something like that where something needs to happen. Um, and if any doubt, again, just look at CMU's academic policy for, uh, you know, for policy for academic integrity, uh, shown in the, in the link here. All right, so that's the main sort of course materials and what's expected to you as the student. One additional thing that we're doing this year is we're also having what we call flash talks. As I said, we have uh, a bunch of industry partners that are uh, helping out with this semester this year, this, this year at CMU and the database group. Um, so starting, uh, I think, next week, uh, on every Wednesday, we'll have, uh, at the end of class, we'll have a 10-minute sort of flash talk where one of the representatives or the engineers or the founders of these various database companies will just come give a quick 10 minute talk about here's what their system does, here's why it's interesting, and here's, here's the, the problems that they're trying to solve. And the idea here is that instead of me just saying, hey, here's how things look in the real world, uh, these companies can come in and show you, oh yeah, here's all the stuff you're learning this semester, and here's how it, why it matters, and here's how it applies to solve real problems uh, they face at, at their companies. So it's sort of reinforcing the topics and material that, that we're discussing. Um, so these aren't recruiting talks. This is the in-class sessions will be strictly about, um, you know, about, about, about the course systems and the ideas. We will be having a separate recruiting session, uh, an event, on September 16th and 17th. If you're taking this class, everyone is invited. I'll, have more, I'll post more information about it on Piazza uh, in a week or two. Um, but all the companies are coming to campus uh, to meet students and talk about internships and, and full-time position openings. Um, so I encourage you, every, everyone, to, to come check those things out. And then I'll also post additional information on how to apply for these companies on uh, you know, Piazza in, in a week or two as well. And the, the idea here is that rather than just pointing you at the, you know, the company website where you just submit your resume and it goes in a pile with everyone else, uh, we've asked them to set up uh, specific channels, email addresses, and, and portals for CMU database groups or CMU DB students, students taking this class, so that you can apply directly to the hiring managers on these various database projects and not just, again, thrown in the mix with, with everyone else. All right, and then the last thing is that we also are also having a seminar session or seminar series this semester, um, and that'll be on Mondays at 4.30, so after class. And this is entirely optional. This is not part of the, the, of the course, but if you're like me and can't get enough of databases, then this is uh, an additional way to sort of learn more what's going on in industry. So we're having this, what we call the Database Building Blocks seminar series, where a bunch of companies and pro people building projects or open source projects on uh, where they're using these sort of these libraries that implement sort of components of, of a database system and then build a larger system around it. So we'll cover this more as we go along through the semester, but you sort of think of systems like Postgres and SQLite and Oracle, these are monolithic database systems where the database system itself uh, is uses custom implementation from all aspects of the system. And then now there's a sort of separate movement for what we'll call composable systems where people are building sort of libraries, standalone pieces, like an execution engine or a storage manager uh, that can then be re reused across different systems, and then you build a larger, sort of more complicated system on top of that. So data fusion is, is the, sort of one of these core components 
that's come out of the Rust community or Apache, part of Apache Arrow uh, that uh, a lot of systems are being built ba based on. So there'll be a bunch of different database companies talking about how they're using Data Fusion and other components throughout the semester. So this will all be th online through Zoom. We'll post the videos on YouTube afterwards. And again, this is entirely optional. This is not required for the course. But like, if you know, if, if you want to live a database-centric lifestyle, then uh, I encourage you to check this out. And I'll announce these throughout the semester. So that'll start September 23rd, the week after the on-campus on uh, database group recruiting event. All right, so class, next class will be on Monday, which is actually today, uh, but as, as I said, I'm re-recording re -recording this. And that should be 2 p.m. I should have updated that, sorry. It's 2 p.m. in Tepper. Uh, and then we'll, just, we'll, again, I'll mention some brief things in the beginning, some announcements, but then we'll plow right through and start talking about the relational model and relational algebra. And then as I also said on Piazza, I want to have a quick Q&A session about hiring databases or database questions in general. Uh, if you want to uh, you know, ask something at the end, we'll, we'll allot 10 minutes for that. Uh, because the, every semester this already comes up, people ask a bunch of questions throughout the semester. When we cover some things in the very beginning. Um, and then we can build upon that uh, during, the, during the rest of the semester. Okay? All right, guys. See you in a couple hours.